Hello, Gareth here and this is my watercolour journal in which basically I talk about what I did in May and some of June. So I'll try and do this once a month. Really it's mostly just a record for me and you might find it boring. You might, but you might find it interesting and you can see what an artist does an amateur artist. <laughs> so this is all going to be done in one go. And so I've even got notes, but my notes are not very good, right? Can you read that? I'm not sure I can. But anyway, this month has been a little bit overwhelming. So I've got about 200 blog posts to write up. And I'm, I've also got to translate them into Japanese. So it's a nightmare. I've done about 90, well, maybe 80 so far. So a long way to go. And I normally do that in the morning, but um, maybe about a week ago, I just got this feeling, I want to get it all done, but it's impossible. So it's going to take maybe about nine or 10 months, but hopefully I can do it. But it is a kind of stress. So yeah, I've been dealing with that. Also, I went on two painting trips and I will show you some of the sketches I did whilst on the painting trips and they were really fun. And for someone like me, this is what painting is all about, getting out there and, um, and painting. But can you tell me this? Can you answer this? Because I don't think I'm a very clever person. I think I'm maybe a bit dumb but why do people do this on videos like talk to someone over there don't, don't you think that's stupid i mean sorry just my opinion i mean like you look at people right i mean don't you think and i did this and i did that don't you think that's kind of nuts okay just just i don't know let me know in the comments maybe there's probably something i'm missing <laughs> but I don't know what. So anyway, I better not lose my track. Okay, so I went on two painting trips. It was really fun. Those painting trips just recharge me. And if you are a painter, an artist, well, maybe a painter, then going outdoors on painting trips is really important in my opinion. Okay, what else did I do? I finished off a really big blog post and it was about getting stuck on a mountain all night in 2014. So I'll leave a link below, but it should be easy to find because I did it very recently, uh, writing the blog post. So I was really glad to get that one written and I did some new paintings for that, which I'll show you soon really really soon i've got too many paintings to show you that that's kind of a warning like <laughs> most people are saying and wait till the end because there'll be something amazing so just to keep you watching right but i thought why not try the opposite approach i'm going to show you a ton of paintings um so maybe this might be a good time to stop and go and search for something else Let's just try the opposite approach. Probably won't work. Okay, so I also did a watercolour lesson in real time and it was painting a mountain trail. And it was the mountain trail of the mountain that I got stuck on all night. So that's, oh yeah, and I've been reading about Bang, Bang Goff, Bang Goff. Let's call him Vincent because he liked people to call him Vincent because nobody could pronounce his family name correctly. But I don't think anybody called him Ban Goff. Ban him. <laughs> Ban him. <laughs> okay. So anyway, I'll talk about him later. So you can maybe you don't have to listen to that bit. But it's really interesting. I'm reading about his biography. Uh, a biographical book on him written by a guy called David Sweetman, I think. He wrote a book on Gauguin and that was amazing, absolutely amazing. I loved that book. It was one of those books where you never finish it. I mean, you just read and read and it lasts forever, but you really enjoy it. You just get lost in it. 
and those kind of books are really rare. I'd love to write a book like that. It's such a joy. And this book's a bit different. It's a lot shorter, but I am enjoying reading it very much. The Gauguin one is amazing though. Highly recommend it, David Sweetman. Okay, so anyway, I haven't done my artist journal for a long time. So my fault. So is this number four, number five? I even changed the title. It was called Artist Update, but that sound really, sounded really boring. So I thought I've got to try to make it sound a little bit more exciting. So now it's the journal, the journey, the journal. So anyway, I've lost my train of thought. So anyway, I'm here, I'm back, and I'm trying to do it again. And next month, when we move into July, I've got to turn up and do this again. Maybe just for me. <laughs> so anyway, I went to this river and um, where was it? In a place called Inukai. And um, well, basically I went to a place called Inukai, no, Mia. And I was looking for a scene to paint, just very random. I had no idea what I was going to find. And then I came across this beautiful stone bridge. It actually had um, wisteria flowers hanging off the stone bridge. But in this picture, I didn't paint them because I was too chicken. So you really get the, uh, the whole truth. Well, maybe <laughs> in this journal. And this is one of the paintings I did. I don't really like this painting, to be honest. I'll probably throw it away. Yeah. Um, I think it's almost successful, but not quite. I love this glaring white light in the middle of the river. That worked out well. Anyway, I wrote about my adventure to this river and I did some filming and I actually had to walk in the river and it was very fun. And you will find out just what a foolish person I am. But being foolish does make your life quite fun. I will say that. And here's another painting, and I'm really happy with this one. The sky is amazing. Background, mountain, hill, whatever is nice. The trees are good. Maybe this one is a bit fussy. I love this. I love the river. And look at that light reflection. The only problem is a blue bridge. Eh. Maybe I should do it again. But I still, I'm still happy with it. I've even got a big size version of that over there, but maybe you can't see it. So, and here's another go because I overdo it. And I like this too. The bridge is better this time, but this is not quite so good. Well, there you go, but I like it. And then I did another one. I told you, you know, I overdo it. I like that. I like that. I really like this bit. I really like that. And the river. Yeah. Okay. And where are we now? Oh dear. I've got everything a bit mixed up. <sighs> okay. But just a minute. I will get my act together. So next. Next. So when I did my blog post about getting stuck on the mountain, I used a lot of paintings from what I did during that year, 2014. But I also added some paintings to embellish the story. <laughs> Listen, I did, a, I did a degree in literature, so sometimes I'm going to use these words, embellish. Okay, and they're basically mostly dark scenes. In fact, they all are, in which I try to capture the atmosphere. And they're mostly just from my imagination. So they're all very dark. I don't know what you think. Let me know in the comments. I quite like it. Yeah. So that's when I came to a glade in the forest on the mountain. So yeah, yeah, yeah. And then here's another one of me walking through the trees in the dark. I don't recommend. <laughs> I thought this would be so difficult, but it's going quite well. This is one where I used an actual photo, but it was a daylight photo and turned it into a night scene. It's okay. It gives a little bit of the feeling. 
and then this one's a bit scary sorry you might think Gareth is a bit of a maybe possibly dangerous person we can't trust after you see this painting because I think that's a little bit yeah that's a little bit dark although that nose does look a bit stupid I don't know I don't know that's a bit silly that one but you see it all anyway I went on a painting trip to um, yeah where did I go up to uh, a gorge so they call it a canyon but it's really it's only about a hundred meters high so I think canyon is a bit like what do you call it exaggeration hyperbole I've no idea but I think it's a bit grandiose grandiose yeah that's the right word but anyway on the way there I stopped and did this sketch I think it's pretty good it's a little bit fussy maybe I should have made this sky uh, a very simple sky and then it would have been better but yeah quite happy with that and then when I got to the canyon gorge I did this on the on spot on the side painting yeah not very good not very good but you really if you do go out and you do paint really please do not get upset too much by your failures because if you continue some of those outdoor paintings will be really good and you'll never produce anything quite like that in the studio I think they have an energy a life to them that you just can't get in the studio so then this is in the studio I think that's better and I added somebody a figure that's my focal point but I think this doesn't work because it's all the eye is everywhere right here 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 there needs to be one focal point so maybe sort of failed failed with that one maybe this is a little better yeah not sure it's something to come back to and improve upon and then another one I love these rays of light I really got excited about that so um, and here's another one so yeah so I quite like this one but doesn't it just doesn't quite succeed and then different format here I think this one is beginning to succeed and I love the rays of light that's really beginning to work so at last maybe some success there so uh, yeah and I did one more and I quite like that too yeah and I'll just show you oh and yes I did this one this was the other the other way up the river and I quite like that so you notice in the rocks I made them interesting by adding different colors so they've got browns and blues and dark brown as well as shading so that makes your rocks look exciting so that's very important I hope you can't hear the family <laughs> and I'll show you the photographs and the photographs really destroy my paintings because the photographs are really wonderful look at that isn't that amazing and you see these rays of light aren't they amazing so very beautiful place here's another one amazing right and then um, I found this river on the way it's a bit difficult to get to I think it's the same river but about 20 or 30 kilometers or whatever before you get to the gorge but it was quite beautiful yeah so next thing for a watercolor lesson I did this so it was um this was a combination of two photographs I wish I had them sorry about that so one was like a scene of a cow and some grass and a very bland depressing sky and the other one was of a beach with an amazing sky so I took the amazing sky and I took the one of the grass and the cow and I put them together and I made this it's beautiful right I'm really really happy with that and then just a minute I did this one which I think is okay but not quite as good okay I'm back so I wanted to do this video all in one go but then my family came home and <laughs> I couldn't well I'm glad they came home 
rather than never coming home again. Anyway, let's continue. And I think I'm on to this one. So I hope I said bull last time. This is a painting of a bull. And I'm quite happy with this second painting. The sky has some lovely colours in it and the ground has lovely colours, that green and then that purple. And then we've got that blue. I think there's something really nice there. I'm not too sure about the shape of my bull. I like to think it's passable. I like to think it's fairly passable, uh, but it's not great. Looks maybe slightly strange. And I love this grassy bit here. So there you go. And then one final attempt. And again, I love the colours. I think the colours are wonderful. And this is nice. But once again, I'm not so happy with the shape of that ball. It's maybe just a little too long. I'm not sure. But there you go. I'm happy I did them. And then I went on another trip and this time to Inukai, which is right next to, um, is it Mia? I went to Mia a few weeks ago and then I went to uh, Inukai and it was a really nice trip. And this is on the spot painting I did of uh, a small stream. And uh, the view was from a, a bridge, which yeah, you could probably guess that. I guess it could be from a drone. <laughs> and I did actually use my drone here and I got some really good shots. So I'm really happy about that. But yeah, it was a really nice view and I'm very happy with this painting. I think it's, it's almost, all, almost all of it is green, but I still think it's very good. Yeah. I think so. I think I like it. <laughs> and then about 30 or 40 metres away, I found this scene further up the road. And we've got this like uh, farmer's house. And I think this lovely curve with the road. And I think this is quite nice. And I quite like this fencing. To be honest, at first I didn't like this, but it actually was an interesting element to add to the painting. I think it just it just looks interesting in a painting. But in terms of just looking around at the countryside, I thought it was a bit ugly, if that makes sense. So I didn't think it was beautiful at first, but in the painting, it actually works or makes the painting look good. And that was my really crappy attempt <laughs> to basically say that it really helps to make this painting work. But uh, when I first saw it, I didn't think it looked particularly beautiful. There, maybe I said it. <laughs> and I did at home another painting and uh, this is the same road and this is a bit further along but it's that same bend and I'm quite happy with this. Yeah, I think it's got quite a nice feeling. And presently I'm doing another one and this was, I'm not sure where this was. This was a bit earlier on, but this is around Inukai. And I'm not sure if I like this painting yet or not. I haven't finished it. I'm going to do some of that fencing, whatever, here and uh, it might really make this painting improve this painting and I'm going to put like a figure or a car on the road and that will make it a bit better. I think this building is maybe a bit too blue. It was meant to be a white building. Whoops. But still, I like it. I especially like this. I really like that and I quite like this and I think it's quite an interesting image but not finished yet and the final thing yes so maybe I told you I went up that mountain and there was one painting I did of um, me basically coming down the mountain trail uh, at dusk and um, I really liked that painting and 
it, it although the painting looked good i wish i had the original but i don't it was there were there were a few flaws in it so i had another go at doing it and i really like this i really like the way i've done the rocks and i really like these trees the shape of them and the color of the sky is nice it's kind of like a, a kind of stephen king kind of sky right and here's another one. Actually, this might be the first one I did. So I like that. Maybe that's the first one is the best one. So I got worse. <laughs> and here's another one. And this was really good until I redid the sky and made this terrible thing. But I might throw this one away, which is a bit sad because everything else is really nice in this painting. But I mucked up the sky. What happened was I was using clips here and so when I took them off it was white and I tried to paint in the white area and then it just spread and spread and spread and then I ended up making this big ugly thing here. But there you go, it happens. And here's another one. Maybe this was my final one but I like this. I especially like the texture here. I think that looks really beautiful. And I think there's something really exciting happening in this painting, but but that's enough for now. I think I've had a good go at that and it's time to move on. So it's moving on to doing a few more paintings of Inukai around there. So that's all the paintings. It was quite a lot, sorry about that. I'll try and be a bit more ruthless with my what is it cutting them out and deciding what do you call it that curating curating yeah the brain it still works sometimes so I need to be a bit better at my curation but I also like to show you some of the failures because I hope it will inspire you um, or basically it will help you not to get too upset when you make a really bad painting. You'll realise it happens to all of us. I've been painting for 20 years, which is a long time, right? So I still have paintings that are failures, uh, but I do eventually get the real good ones as well. And normally it doesn't take that much time to reach that point, but I'll still get the failures. So I hope that encourages you not to let those failures stop you. The worst thing you can do is get down and stop. Uh, when I do a failed painting, I always think to myself that often I learn from the failures. Often there's new things to learn with the mistakes I make. I hope that makes sense, but it's true. Also, with those failed paintings, you can paint over them again and do all kinds of crazy stuff over them so you don't waste the paper as well and you just like move on and have another go. Um, you look at your failed painting and you think to yourself why did it fail and in, and in that way you're developing because you're learning why it failed and so you're learning um, what to improve in the next painting and you're also learning which is very important what made it a good painting that's really important and a lot of beginner and amateur artists never really think like that they never think well why did it fail it can be very hard at first and also they don't think about how can I improve it and then finally why is this painting so good when eventually they end up with a good painting so there you go. Goodness me, that was a lecture. I apologise. Anyway, I need my notes, my beautiful notes. And the final thing is, I'm just going to talk about my book, which is about Van Gogh. And um, just a few things that I've read that are interesting and want to share with you. I really do enjoy my evening time. I get into my bed, relax, get my book out and start reading about Van Gogh. I'll call him Vincent because everybody gets his name wrong and <laughs> I really doubt I've got it right. So um, anyway, one of the first things about him that was very interesting for me is that he was a very intelligent person. He wasn't just one of these arty-farty type people who was good at painting 
and did painting because he couldn't really do anything else, which might be me. <laughs> but uh, no, no, I was quite good at biology. But uh, he was very intelligent and I think he could speak three languages. So he could speak his Dutch, also French and I think German or English. Maybe he could even speak four because I, I think later on he learnt English as well. So um, he was very intelligent person. And also he could draw really well at a young age. I think he did a drawing of a rabbit. I should show you basically. And he was about nine or 10 years old and it is so good. I'm glad I didn't see that when I was young because I would have just given up. I would have thought, wow, if he can draw like that at nine or 12, then I've got no chance. But then again, it's Vincent. I'm calling him Vincent. And also, um, if you practice something, it's amazing how over time you really do get good very quickly. And you also find your own way. And just being really good at drawing, it isn't everything. As long as you can do basic drawing, that's enough, you know? You don't have to be so brilliant, but he was very good. And I think he was about nine or 10. It was impressive. And then his first job, he was an art dealer. So very interesting. His uncle basically was an art dealer, had a huge company, very successful, and he got Vincent involved. But um, the reason he got him involved, and this is very interesting, is because Vincent later on went to a boarding school and the first year went really well. But then in the second year, and there was a new headmaster and he was a bit more strict than the first one, but nobody really knows what happened. It's a bit of a mystery, but something really bad happened and Vincent had to come home. And I don't know if this was like a, some kind of mental, because we know he's got like some kind of mental issue, right? Despite being intelligent, whether he, he basically went a bit nuts, but something happened and he had to come home. And then basically that was the end of his education. And the other children then got money spent on them for education. And he got shipped off to his uncle to learn about being an art dealer. Yeah. So interesting. And also final point, Vincent was not a modernist, not really. He liked a lot of the um, traditional art of the period, which they, which normally was shown in this something called the Salon. I don't know what it was, the Salon. And that kind of art was that kind of classical kind of art, you know, images of maybe what is it like, you know, that kind of Greece or Roman architecture and it's all quite stiff and very formal and um, also spiritual kind of images. That That's the kind of traditional thing. I think he actually liked that. Um, but he also liked, I think, the Impressionists. But I will find out. I hope I'm not giving you misinformation here. Don't trust me. <laughs> I hope that's not going to be my final word for this video. Don't trust me. So that's basically everything. Hopefully I'll be back one month later with something of value and interest to show you in the form of paintings and also a few painting trips to talk about. Uh, hopefully I'll be doing that. We'll see because now in Japan we're heading into the rainy season. Shall I do it again like this? Yeah different camera angle guys so now we're heading shouldn't do this because I do have a rather big nose uh, especially in Japan anyway my wife calls me big bird but let's move on <laughs> anyway anyway I forgot what I was going to say I remembered anyway hopefully there'll be a few painting trips it's stupid right why don't I look at you? So hopefully there'll be a few painting trips, but we are entering into the rainy season. So it might be difficult to get out. More recently, in recent years, it, it, okay, back up, back up, Gary. In the past, 
the rainy season, it would rain every day, like a gentle rain. But the pattern seems to have changed. Global warming? I don't know, could be. But now, basically, it will rain and then stop and you'll get like seven or eight days of really beautiful sunny weather. And then after that, a huge downpour. And sometimes you can get a bit of flooding in certain areas of Japan. So it seems to be like that nowadays. So there might be opportunities to go painting. Hope so. And hopefully I'll have a few things to tell you about Vincent and maybe about something else. We'll see. So that's all. I hope this has inspired you and, and, <laughs> and given you hopefully a bit of a laugh. Bye for now.